It's a massive machine in a massive room. And what it's working on could change the way we make scientific discoveries for decades. The recently launched Titan supercomputer will tackle the world's biggest problems. Titan uses about nine megawatts of power. That's as much as a, a small town of about uh, four or 5,000 people. Uh, it also uses about the, the same amount of water as a town of four or 5,000 people uh, to cool it. Enough to power a small city, and it took a small city's worth of manpower to put it together. Housed and operated in the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee, part of the U.S. Department of Energy, rocketing straight to the top of the world's most powerful computers list with NVIDIA GPUs inside, like the chip in your PlayStation 3, but designed for science. The, the kinds of problems that get solved in both of those instances, either in scientific computing or in gaming, they actually have a lot in common. We take advantage of that. These GPUs do the same type of calculations to create those pictures on the screen that we need to be able to do to make pictures of what's going on in the universe. We build processors that go into mobile devices all the way up to supercomputers, and there's a tremendous amount of design leverage across and up and down that spectrum. Now, to get a sense of just how powerful Titan is, consider that it can calculate in one hour what your computer would take 20 years to finish, and they're just getting started. About every 10 years, computers have been getting a thousand times faster than they were before. And we've been doing this for several decades now. Well, we've reached the first petaflop. That's a million billion operations every second. And that kind of power doesn't come cheap. It costs $9 million a year just for Titan's electricity bill. But thanks in part to the GPUs inside, Titan is actually five times more efficient than the previous model. And what it gives us is a glimpse into what happens next. Think of a supercomputer as a time machine. The simulations that we do on the machine today are trying to predict what's going to happen in the future. And so with a more powerful computer, we can look farther into the future to try and understand what's going to happen.